The Paris Olympics touted climate-friendly food. Athletes demanded more meat. Let me try and guess what this is before I read the caption. <laughs> Some kind of bready thing right? Th this stuff on top, the garnish thing. It's some kind of mousse, right? With like raisins? Oh, it's chickpeas. Chickpeas whipped into a pomade served with peas in a smoked fish broth. And the portion, I mean, super filling. <laughs> Chefs with Michelin stars helped design the menus and Paris 2024 organizers have emphasized all the plant-based and locally sourced offerings that minimize the carbon footprint of these games. So that would kind of be my first question, I guess. You have, you know, a established chefs making the food. Okay, so it's gonna probably taste good, right? But you're gonna get shit like this, right? You're gonna get these tiny portions. Is this actually gonna be satisfying for people who are presumably burning a good amount of calories? And then also the locally sourced claim, I'm assuming that's part of the whole environmentally friendly, less meat and locally sourced. No, one of those things is not like the other. I cite this all the time by Hannah Ritchie for Our World and Data. You want to reduce the carbon footprint of your food, focus on what you eat, not whether your food is local. Transport is a small contributor to emissions. For most food products, it accounts for less than 10%, and it's much smaller for the largest GHG emitters, in beef from beef herds, it's 0.5%. Not just transport, but all processes in the supply chain after the food leaves the farm, processing, transport, retail, and packaging mostly account for a small share of emissions. This is the case when we look at individual food products. However, studies also show that this holds true for actual diets. And then she cites this study that found food transport accounted for only 6% of emissions, whilst dairy, meat, and eggs accounted for 83%. Then she talks about one exception, air freighting, but most foods are not transported by air. There are only a few that are easily perishable or, or things that go bad really quickly, something like asparagus, berries. So if you want to reduce your diet's carbon footprint, avoid air freighted foods where you can. But beyond this, you can have a larger difference by focusing on what you eat rather than eating local. Eating less meat and dairy or switching from ruminant meat to chicken, pork, or plant-based alternatives will reduce your footprint by much more. Anyway, back to the article. Among the options in and around the cavernous food hall for athletes are twisted artichoke truffle croissants, croissant, lentil doll, and beefless bourgnon. How do you say that? Bourgnon? Bourgnon? What the fuck is a bourgnon? Is this like a pasta thing, right? Bourgnon. I don't know how to spell it. Bourguignon. Okay, yeah, right. It's like a soup. Going back to like how satisfying is this? It just says beefless. So like, do they have some sort of plant-based protein rich alternative in there or is it just like fucking mushrooms oh and they have increased the amount of meat and other animal products had adjusted supplies in response to athlete feedback and consumption patterns in the early days of the games certain products such as eggs and grilled meats are particularly popular among athletes so their quantities have been immediately increased paris olympic ceo said there has been a reinforcement in animal proteins with 700 kilos of eggs and a ton of meat to meet the demands of the athletes who we place at the heart of the Paris 2024 experience. So that sucks. If it's like a lack of protein or just satisfying meals, obviously you can include more soy and whatnot. I don't know if they have any soy in any of these meals. That means the food served in the Olympic Village may end up being somewhat less climate friendly than hoped. So actually we can see how much less <laughs> climate friendly it is. Again, our world and data. This is another thing I quote all the time. It's in so many of my videos, environmental impacts of food production, greenhouse gas emissions per kilogram of food products. So this is carbon dioxide equivalents here. Un surprisingly, beef is by far the worst. Uh, we can actually add and take away some options, which is super cool. Let's add, uh, let's add tofu. So per kilogram of food for eggs, we have 4.6. And then for tofu, we have 3.16. So already a fairly significant reduction there. I mean, again, compared to beef, it's just everything's better than beef. Please don't eat beef. And they added an additional 700 kilograms of eggs. Kilogram is about 2.2 pounds, so over 1,400 pounds of eggs. So if we multiply 700 times, what was it for eggs? 4.16 or 4.67, 3,269 carbon dioxide equivalent. And tofu was 3.16, 2,212. Really adds up. Now you may be thinking, okay, but are they equivalent in terms of calories and protein? 
let's see. So I've got 100 grams of eggs, of cooked eggs here, 100 grams of cooked extra firm tofu. For the eggs, 155 calories, 12.6 grams of protein. And for the tofu, 110 calories, so a little bit less calories, 13.3 grams of protein. So actually slightly more protein per gram, quite a bit more protein per calorie. Let's see if we do each at 100 calories, 100 calories of cooked eggs, 8.1 grams, 100 calories of cooked tofu, 12 grams. And there are other plant proteins as well. There are other legumes like black beans and whatnot that are going to be not as high in protein as tofu, but still very close to eggs and much better for the environment. I'm not even going to do this comparison with the meat because I don't know what meat they're talking about. But if we go back to the chart, we can see even poultry meat is significantly worse than eggs, which means any plant protein you choose is going to be significantly better. That means the food served in the Olympic Village may end up being somewhat less climate friendly than hoped after a plan to forego air conditioning in what after a plan after a plan to forego air conditioning in the village was frustrated by teams announcing they were bringing their own ACs. Yeah. What? These people are stupid. So unlike the locally sourced shit, using less AC obviously is better for the environment, but like you need to keep cool. <laughs> you need athletes to be comfortable. You need everyone to be comfortable. You cannot, oh my God, that's so freaking insane. What's the temperature in Paris right now? People die from heat stroke. They don't die from egg deficiency. 78 degrees right now in Paris, which is, you know, not super hot. You can certainly survive without AC, but that's gonna suck. And then it's getting up into the upper 80s on Monday. We've got like 90 degree heat here today. Yesterday it was almost 100 degrees. Maybe Olympians are just a bunch of babies. We need our meat and our AC. It's 75 degrees. No, I'm joking about the AC. That That's really stupid. You can't take away people's AC. Come on. The loudest food complaints came from the team Great Britain, the country with the worst food on the planet. Sounds about right. There are not enough of certain foods, eggs, chicken, certain carbohydrates. And then there's the quality of the food with raw meat being served to athletes. Okay, well, that's a... Uh... What? So they are complaining about lack of eggs and chicken, but also lack of certain carbs, whatever that means, rice, pasta, quality of the food. I mean, might be right about that too. <laughs> oh, Team Great Britain is among those that bring their own chefs and they had to add an extra chef to support athletes who did not want to eat in the Olympic Village. I guess that's the biggest issue with this. The ultimate goal is laudable. It's great trying to reduce environmental impact. Fantastic. Of course, we have to think about unintended consequences. How many of these people who are so heavily catered to, how many of them are just going to go get food elsewhere, right? Or have other food brought to them. These aren't just athletes who want to win. These are athletes whose country wants them to win, right? They have a lot of people uh, catering to them. The German men's hockey team also complained. Basically, it just takes an insanely long time because they're completely overwhelmed at peak times. And then the quality and quantity of the meals aren't good because there are simply too many people coming at the same time. Yeah, that's that's a problem. That has nothing to do with uh, plants, right? Organizers anticipated that athletes preparing for moments that could make or break their careers would prize predictability over experimentation and nutritional needs above all else. They need a lot of proteins. You can't just say, okay, you go 60 or 100% vegetarian. It's just not possible. Oh my God, give me a break. Even if you are eating less protein, right? Like calories is one thing. If you're getting significantly less calories, you are going to feel it. It is going to affect your energy. But even if you're getting significantly less protein for the time that you're in Paris, it's not going to like make your muscles waste away. That's not how that works. It's not like the Olympics is years, right? It's just what, two weeks? Even if your sport is something like, you know, strength training, the muscles you have were built lifting and eating lots of protein in the past, right? <laughs> A few days of having less protein, of lifting less, is not going to impact your gains. That's so stupid. Now, the predictability over experimentation part of that, I think, makes a lot more sense than nutritional needs. Number one, we know athletes are often very superstitious and they want to have things a certain way, you know, what they're used to, particularly with something as big as the Olympics. But also, it could be like a digestion thing. If you have an athlete who's not used to eating maybe a lot of chickpeas or something, and then they have this whatever the fuck that pomade thing is. Pomade, isn't that like a hair product? Anyway, they eat a bunch of chickpeas. Maybe it fucks up their stomach. Now their stomach's fucked for the Olympics. 
oh no. So in that sense, I can understand an athlete saying like, nah, I'm going to have our team chef make me the food I'm used to. Oh, interesting. Plant-based meals only make up about 30% of what's on offer in the Olympic Village. So it's 60% at the Olympic venues. So what you and I, spectators, can buy. That's great. I love that. Only 30% of the meals for actual, you know, potential Olympians for the athletes are plant-based. Really? This is what we're complaining about? Oh, that remains true after the supply adjustments. I'm not sure how that is, but okay. The food court set up in what was once a power plant. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just throw that in there. That's a fun little fact. Is designed to allow athletes to adapt their menus according to the needs of their sport, whether high protein or high carbohydrates. I think there's some misconceptions around what athletes eat. We eat a lot of carbs. I got three forms of carbs on my plate right now. A bread roll, a croissant, a crepe. Fuel up. Don't stay hungry. That's what I'm talking about, man. I assume most of the, the time she's not just eating like 90% bread. But when you're competing, yeah, man, makes sense. Carbo load. Okay, so one athlete, American, American canoeist, isn't complaining. They do a really good job of providing a variety for us so people who are coming from far away can feel a little bit more at home. She added that there was a sufficient choice of proteins. Everyone's been asking me about the halal options at the dining hall, so I'm just gonna take you all through it. There's pretty much all salad bars outside. Oh, wow, so they've got it all separated. Interesting. Oh, I'm hungry though. I <laughs> want the salad bar. I certainly don't envy anyone having to organize something like this. I know I was like, they're making some dumb decisions and environmentally, yes, I think it's pretty stupid. Again, AC, <laughs> what's happening there? But I certainly don't envy anyone having to organize just a massive number of people, massive amount of food, like so stressful. I'm just gonna sit here and make my little videos. I was a sprinter from Afghanistan where typical diets are meat centric. Said he appreciates the focus on plant-based food in Paris. There are plenty of vegetables here that I like. Another said favorite dish is a lentil doll made with green lentils from just outside Paris. That's served with a low fat yogurt. Yeah, so I'm noticing a lot of the plant-based stuff uh, definitely is not vegan. That artichoke croissant thing topped with a poached egg, cheese, and truffles. <laughs> Yeah, so like, is anything vegan there? The lettuce at the salad bar? Hmm. Still, the United States was among the nations that decided from the outset that it would bring chefs to Paris. I'm shocked. The director of food and nutrition said in an interview that the presence of familiar chefs is something comforting and puts the athlete at ease. The way they talk about athletes, it's either like very infantilizing, like they're little babies, or like they're animals. This is how I imagine they talk about racehorses. The team still relies on some U.S. supplies that shipped over 30 pallets worth, including 8,000 bottles of high-protein milk shakes. Oh my lord. I talk about raw foods a lot and how dumb they are and how bad they are for, you know, strength training and everything else. And But the thing is, like, I did gain muscle eating predominantly fruits and very little protein. <laughs> when I ate that way, I was able to gain muscle. I was still able to get stronger. It's not ideal, certainly, but like the human body's amazing. And I don't know, athletes maybe need to stop babying themselves so much. I think they'll be okay eating slightly less meat, slightly less eggs for two weeks. Many French bakers go on vacation for an entire month in August. Wow, but after negotiations, one was willing to stay open and exclusively supply us. Oh my God, you took their vacation. In August in Paris, a baguette is sometimes a full 20 minutes away. So is this like just for bakers or is this like a national thing? Is August like the vacation month? That would be funny if it's just, <laughs> it's just bakers. This is the period when most Parisians escape the city for their month long annual holidays. Oh my God, that is not good for the country, I would imagine. The government actually did restrict Bakers. What? Bakers have faced restrictions dating back as far as the 1790s on when they could close their shops. Only since 2015, when rules finally relaxed, have all Parisian bakers been free to join the August exodus. All right. I'm so happy for you guys. <laughs> so happy you can have your month off. What? I want a month off. Okay, but what I want to know, are there any athletes who are actually like blaming the lack of meat and egg situation on their results. Like, is that, that's gotta be happening, right? So we have a retired Australian Olympic swimmer 
who criticized the lack of meat options for athletes in the Olympic Village, saying it could be partly responsible for the lack of world records at the Paris Olympics. The lack of world records boils down to this whole eco-friendly carbon footprint, vegan first mentality rather than high performance. They had a charter that said 60% of food in the village had to be vegan friendly. And the day before the opening ceremony, they ran out of meat and dairy options in the village because they hadn't anticipated so many athletes would be choosing the meat and dairy options over the vegan friendly ones. Again, I didn't see a whole lot of vegan friendly, but okay. The caterer had to rejig their numbers and bring in more of those products because surprise, surprise, world-class athletes don't have vegan diets. So if I had to guess, I don't know anything about this James Magnuson. It sounds like he's rather anti-vegan, which is why he keeps saying vegan instead of vegetarian, which it looks like a lot of these meals are. Here we go. Australian swimmer blamed the ridiculous conditions in the Olympic Village for hampering her bid to set a world record in the 400 meter freestyle on Saturday. (laughs) Girl, that's so sad. It probably wasn't the time I thought I was capable of, but living in the Olympic Village makes it hard to perform. It's definitely not made for high performance, so it's about who can really keep it together in the mind. Okay, so she didn't necessarily say meat, but even still, like you can't, You can't do that, right? As an athlete, isn't that really poor form? Unless like something obvious happened that would have influenced your performance. Like, I don't know, makes you look like a baby. Reminds me of that girl who went viral on TikTok for all the wrong reasons. She did some sort of like beauty pageant or something. You have a certain level of status. I guess they don't want you to win. They did not want me. They did not want me to win. And they did not want to give me more success. It's not like there was crazy competition. How do people record these things and post them online? How does no part of you go, wait, this makes me look like a twat? Not just about the menu, several have complained about the living quarters having no air conditioning, leading some to ship in their own air con devices to keep competitors cool. We appreciate the concept of not having air conditioning due to the carbon footprint, but this is high performance games. We're not going for a picnic. (laughs) Others have complained about the hard beds. As someone with back issues, that could legitimately F me up if I sleep on a ah, for me it'd probably be too soft that would really oof. oh the filthy conditions on the sun forced the triathlon to be po- postponed by a day so they didn't get it completely cleaned up oh no that is my absolute favorite thing to come out of all of this is that Macron and the Parisian mayor, I can't remember her name, but they said that once the river was cleaned of all the poo-poo, it's a poo-poo river. Once it was all cleaned, they were actually going to swim in it. The beautiful Parisians said, fantastic. We are going to shit in the river. (laughs) They were actually telling people like based on where they lived, where they were on the river, where they were going to shit on the river at what time to do it to make sure it got, it got, (laughs) what beautiful coming together of the city. We're shitting together, I guess. Look, I know we all hate the Olympics for various reasons. Many people boycott them. I've never watched the Olympics other than just like a couple clips online in like my entire life. I don't, I don't care. But if they're going to occur, which they are for the foreseeable future, I appreciate that there are people involved who are trying to make impact a little bit less environmental impact, trying to reduce the environmental impact. That's great. I mean, organizing anything is going to be difficult when you're adding more restrictions. It's certainly not going to make it easier. And maybe teach athletes to be like a little bit more resilient. I don't know. Aren't aren't they known for being like resilient and pushing through? And I don't I don't, I don't get that from all this whinging. <laughs> Look, if I go somewhere and there's no AC, even if it's like even if it's not even hot, it's like 75 degrees. Oh my God, I'm going to be complaining because I'm a whiny little bitch, not a competitor. <laughs> Come on. And even if this food were vegan, like I'm I'm not, I'm not eating that. I will bring 80,000 pallets of Soylent and Nugo bars. But what do you think about all of this? Do you appreciate the attempt or do you think it's kind of a ridiculous venue to even, to even try to do something like this? Let me know. And of course, like the video and subscribe. And thank you so much to my members and my patrons. I do post two exclusive videos for tier two members and patrons, two videos a month of vlog. And then also a controversial. I just posted the controversial for July. And yeah, that's it for me. Thanks so much, everybody. New video soon.